If you look in Song of Solomon, you see the bride saying, I am my beloved's, and his desire is for me. Notice she doesn't say, I will be, or I was. She is convinced that right now she belongs to him. She's not anticipating some future day where she might be able to know or have a sense of security. She's not reminiscing on a past day when she had a sense of security. She knows right now that she is his possession. I am my beloved. I belong to him who loves me. To belong to somebody is very special, but to belong to someone who loves you is even more special. And she notices here that his desire is for her. His desire is not for what she can do for him. His desire is not for her gifts or her service only or things that she's able to accomplish on his behalf. He wants her and she can see it. She is convinced of it. She is just as convinced that she belongs to him as he wanting her, as him wanting her. I want to encourage you that this is what is needed today is a sense, a conviction, a, a real settling on the inside to end all of these efforts and strivings that once you have given yourself in marriage to the Lord, saying you and you only from here on out, I give my life to you, you settle in acceptance. And there's no need to try to get God to accept you because you're accepted on the basis of someone so much better than you. And it is your beloved Christ. And so because he has taken your place and become your acceptance with God, you can rest in his complete acceptance of you. This is so special and so powerful for us. I I wanted to say this because I want to persuade you or encourage you not to allow anyone to persuade you away from security in his arms. I want to encourage you to refuse to listen to anything that is not fragrance with his desire for you. I want to encourage you to daily set your heart higher than the world and other loves by saying, I am my beloved's and his desire is for me. I've written this down many times, but I pray that the Lord would draw you to secluded places where his face is so that you may obtain graces that will end all the chases and fill all the spaces so that nothing is wasted. I was listening to Charles Spurgeon the other day on audiobook, and he said some of us may not doubt that we have salvation, but he says, yet we are not feasting with him. We may not doubt that we have salvation, yet his left hand is not under our head and his right hand does not embrace us. Guys, it is important to realize nobody has ever walked with God subconsciously. He invites us in to the experience of his person. And if you're watching this now and you don't have a consistent, vibrant, living exchange with the Lord. My question is, are you the spouse of Christ yet content to be without the presence of your beloved? It's it's a rhetorical question, but it should hit the root that you're married to him. He has now given himself to you as all satisfaction. This should be the core and root of, of your whole life. And to love him in a sense, is to watch him every moment for fear of losing sight of him because you recognize his, his great value. I wrote this poem down, When I, my beloved, find all my passions are aglow, and with all my heart and with all my mind, I will not let him go. Even as Song of Solomon 3, 4 says, I have found him whom my soul loves, and I will not, I will not let him go. I, I want to encourage you that this love exchange with Jesus is everything. And if maybe you've recently been feeling like 
other things have been taking your interest, other things even in God or in the scriptures that have been taking your interest away from a living, vibrant love exchange with Him. I want to encourage you that only love exchange with Him will satisfy the soul. Everything else falls miserably short. So to rest assured in this, that you belong to Him and that His desire is for you. He wants you. Uh, I was talking to someone the other day and I said, when we love Jesus with all our hearts, so many people claim this, but it looks like something. It looks like he's more important than anybody else. And when he's more important than anyone else, he takes a priority above everything else. And that looks like enjoying to be with him and to listen to his voice and to lay at his feet and, and, and experience the sweet, blissful presence of God as not only a starting point for the day, but from that starting point in the day to live and move and have your being in the sweetness of his presence. You say, Eric, I don't live that way. Well, you can, and it is the new covenant. So you say, Eric, do you live that way? It's my 100% daily goal to live in unbroken communion and constant awareness of God's presence. As a matter of fact, I wrote this quote down from A.W. Tozer. He says, the continuous and unembarrassed interchange of love and thought between God and the soul of the redeemed man is the throbbing heart of New Testament religion. This intercourse between God and the soul is known to us in conscious personal awareness. Conscience, conscious personal awareness. It is personal. That is, it does not come through the body of believers as such, but is known to the individual and to the body through the individuals which compose it. And it is conscious. That is, it does not stay below the threshold of consciousness and work there unknown to the soul but comes within the field of awareness where the man can know it as he knows any other fact of experience. Uh, to know God is just like knowing another person. The more time you spend with him and en enjoy his presence, you become more like him and he's able to take more ground inside of the soul. But it is this conscious experience his left hand under your head and his right hand embracing you not just knowing that you're born again but feasting with him not just knowing that you have um you know a place with him but actually enjoying him as all oh those of you that are watching i i pray the lord would bring you into a deeper experience of his presence those of you that walk and an experience of his presence i pray the lord take it deeper make it richer sweeter it would be heavier, thicker, uh, a, 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 a deeper reality of Him with you in the exchange of what that is with Him. Father, I thank you, Lord. Bring us into this reality in an even deeper way because we desire nothing more than just you. And we know, Lord, that as your river flows in and we enjoy it, it will inevi inevitably flow out and touch others. Blessed be your name, Lord. Take us into yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, just wanted to let you know, um, we have uh, a book that just came out called The Golden Lips of Christ. It's an exposition on John 17, Jesus' last prayer and desires for us. But we also, have, we also have a new book called In the Truth. Um, it is... A study on that phrase in the truth and what it actually means to be in the truth. And I found through study that it is far more than correctness. It is so much deeper than accuracy or even honesty. It is a, a actual interactive experience through the word of God and the spirit of God that takes over the whole life. And uh, the whole book is about that. But I'll, uh, I'll put the link below for these books. Thank you guys who are supporting us. We love you. Blessings to you.